I'm a prolific user of the Raspberry Pi. I use it in my courses and to run services in my lab, such as a Node Red instance and MQTT broker to go with it. Naturally, I compare new single board computers with the Raspberry Pi. Now, the UniHiker drew my attention because it solved all of the Raspberry Pi issues that annoyed me. If you're curious about what UniHiker is and what it does better than the Raspberry Pi, then stay tuned. In the next few minutes, I'll explain everything. DF Robot is well regarded in the maker community for its hardware products for DIY projects, robotics, and IoT applications. DF Robot offers a variety of sensors, boards, and kits that are often praised for their ease of use and versatility. DF Robot also has an active maker community, as evidenced by the community forums, where users share projects, reviews, tutorials, and other insights. This suggests that the brand is a product provider and a platform for makers to collaborate and share knowledge. One of the most impressive products is the UniHiker single board computer. When I first came across it in the interwebs, it immediately drew my attention and I asked DF Robot to send me one so I could record this video and try it out. Why did I find the UniHiker difficult to resist? Well, there's a combination of reasons for this. Let me explain why after I explain first what the UniHiker is. The UniHiker is a single board computer. It's got a 2.8 inch touchscreen and supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. The device has various sensors, such as a light sensor, accelerometer, gyroscope, and microphone. It also has a built-in coprocessor for interfacing with analog, digital, I2C, UART, and SPI sensors and actuators. The device comes with pre-installed software, including a built-in Jupyter notebook, which is an editor for writing Python programs, among many other things, and a browser-based programming environment. This allows for quick and easy programming using Python. It supports popular coding software like VS Code, VIM or Vim, and Thony. The integrated ping-pong control library controls the device's built-in sensors and other connected sensors and actuators. UniHiker has a built-in IoT service that uses the MQTT protocol for data storage and provides real-time web data access. All data is stored within the device itself. As you can see, UniHiker is built for Internet of Things applications. As you probably already know, I'm a prolific user of the Raspberry Pi. I use it in my courses and to run services in my lab, such as a Node-RED instance and MQTT broker to go with it. I also use it to manage my workbench and log lab environmental data, among other things. Except for my Raspberry Pi bench automation computer, all of my Raspberry Pis operate in a headless configuration, meaning there's no screen and keyboard. And naturally, I compare new single board computers that I come across with the Raspberry Pi. Now, one thing that the Raspberry Pi can't do out of the box is to show its status. Aside from the power and activity LEDs, there's no other way to know what the Raspberry Pi is doing just by looking at it. And I always seem to be searching for device IP addresses so that I can connect to it directly and see what's going on. Now, another issue is interaction. To do anything with the Raspberry Pi, you need either to connect a keyboard and display or use a remote desktop, and both can be annoying. In addition, when you get a new Raspberry Pi, you can't start using it immediately. First, you have to set it up, which usually means downloading and installing a full operating system, setting up networking, remote desktop, SSH, etc. Plus, you also need to purchase an approved power supply. The UniHiker drew my attention because it has solved all of the Raspberry Pi issues that I mentioned. The UniHiker, as I said, has a 2.8 inch, 240 by 320 pixel color display that is also touch capable, and this solves the user interface issue. It has an operating system, Linux Debian, which is pre-installed in its flash memory with all the tools needed to get work immediately done. And this solves the time-consuming setup issue. Uh, the UniHiker is powered by connecting it to any USB computer port or power supply thanks to its USB-C plug, and nothing fancy or expensive here is needed. 
In addition to the above, the Unihaka, like the Raspberry Pi, offers digital input and output pins and the ability to connect standard microcontroller components such as LEDs, switches, buttons, sensors, and motor drivers. But unlike the Raspberry Pi, instead of a traditional pin header, the Unihaka uses an edge connector similar to what you find on a microbit. And by the way, it is possible to use microbit expansion boards with the Unihaka. There are also three gravity standard connectors. There's also a USB-A connector in addition to the USB-C connector that works with a keyboard. And again, unlike the Raspberry Pi, the Unihaka has a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a microphone, a light sensor, and a buzzer. And all of those are programmatically accessible with the Pong Python library. For almost everything I use my Raspberry Pis for, the Unihaka provides a viable and in many cases, better alternative. I wanted to try the Unihaka out first in one specific use case. Over the last few months, I've been working on a new book on Node Red and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. I used one of my Raspberry Pis to run the instance of the Node Red server that I'm using in the book. So I wondered how well, how easy, and how quickly could I set up Unihiker to host a Node Red server? So I'll explain my testing in a moment. But first, I just want to take a, a few minutes to show you a few things that people have done with a Unihiker. And this gives you a better feel of what this device can do and then can inspire you for projects of your own that you can base on the Unihiker. So here's a few that I find very interesting. There's the Azure Speech Recognition and Synthesis, which is a project that utilizes Unihiker's speech recognition and synthesis capabilities and Wi-Fi to create an intelligent conversation assistant using Azure. Here's another one, a pet pot smart planter. So this is a smart planter that uses high-tech sensors to monitor environmental conditions like temperature, humidity, and soil moisture air quality, UV index, and light intensity, and it communicates its status through emojis. Another one is the desktop Geiger counter. It uses Unihiker to create a Geiger counter for real-time monitoring of ionizing radiation levels. And here's another one that struck my interest. It's a wireless face tracking wheeled platform. So this project allows you to remotely control a mechanum wheeled platform for facial recognition or controlled wirelessly through the network. And you can find many more amazing projects based on the Unihiker in the DF Robot community website. Okay, let's go back to my first Unihiker project now. Earlier in this post, I mentioned that Unique Hiker, when you receive it, is basically ready to use. The operating system, the services, there's an editor and a Python interpreter, and many sample projects and programs are already on the device. You literally plug the USB power into the Unique Hiker, you wait for a few seconds for it to boot up, and you're ready to play around. When you power up the Unique Hiker, Debian will take a few seconds to boot, and when the boot process is complete, you'll see the welcome screen. Then use the home button, which is on the left of the device, to enter the menu system, and use the touch screen to navigate the options. Of course, you can try the games first, which is what I did. I played Snake, and it was kind of difficult to put it down and get some work done. My objective here was to install Node Red. For this, I needed to figure out how to access the operating system command line and start the included MQTT broker. I didn't really have to install anything at this point. As I browse the menus, I noticed that under the service toggle menu, it is possible to start Jupyter, which gives access to the command line, and the SIoT service, which implements the MQTT broker. So without even having to do any network configuration at this point, I was already more than halfway through achieving my goal. Next up, I set up networking. This allowed me to access the command line using Jupyter and my browser and then install Node Red. The process to set up networking on the Unihaka is very simple. The device runs a local web page service with a fixed IP address at 10.1.2.3. So this interface is accessible via the USB-C port. So connect the Unihaka to the computer via USB-C go to the address 
10.1.2.3 in the browser and boom, you're there. In the browser, navigate to the network settings page, select the network you want to use for the UniHiker, provide the password, click on connect and that's it. The UniHiker is now ready to use remotely. I disconnected it from the computer. There's no shutdown option, so just pull the plug to do that and connect it to a regular USB power supply or a battery. And after a few seconds, again, the unit hiker was ready to use. Now I wanted to install Node Red. To do this, I'd use the command line interface that is available in Jupyter. And I'm just following the standard installation process for Node Red that is described on the Node Red documentation website. And I'm following the instructions actually for Raspberry Pi. To start Jupyter, go to the service toggle page, click on open page in the Jupyter box. And then once in Jupyter, get a new terminal window and in the terminal window, copy the standard command line instruction to install Node Red for the Raspberry Pi. Just remember in the question about installing the Raspberry Pi specific nodes, answer no, since this is not actually a Raspberry Pi. We just want Node Red without the specific Raspberry Pi nodes. During the installation, I kept an eye on the UniHiker system information page just to see what the performance was like. I could see that the CPU usage was around 15% during installation. So it seems like most of the work was downloading the software and then copying files to this file system. A few minutes later, Node Red was ready to use. To start it, I used the Node Red start command. In the command line output, uh, here you can see that Node Red is now running on port 1880 and connected to the MQTT broker on port 1883. The SIoT service is protected by a username and password, which I needed when I created my first Node Red flow using uh, the MQTT service. Just uh, remember this because it's not easy to find via Googling around. The MQTT username and password for the UniHiker is SIoT and DFRobot respectively. To access Node Red, just open up a new browser tab and go to the address that your UniHiker shows you in the status page. In my case, it's 192.168.111.64 and the port number, as I mentioned, is 1880. I created a simple flow that publishes a timestamp to an MQTT topic and reads the same timestamp back and it works. There was just one thing uh, that I mentioned that I struggled with in the Node Red setup, and that is the security in the SIoT MQTT service. It's not very well documented, and it took me a bit of time to find out what the username and password is. During the installation and start of the Node Red service, the peak CPU usage was 45%. During usage, it hovers around 1.5%. On the other hand, memory usage is around 48% at idle, so that's quite significant. I'll do some more stress testing on the UniHiker, but based on the numbers that I have at this point, I expect that the device uh, will be able to comfortably handle most of the node red tasks I give it, which are modest at best. For simple home automation projects, there's a lot of spare capacity in the UniHiker to get the job done. When I see what other makers have created around this device, for example, projects that use the OpenCV library for computer vision to implement face and object recognition, I'm inclined to expect that with efficient programming and clever use of cloud services, the UniHiker will be an invaluable tool in my kit. Price-wise, the UniHiker retails at around 79 US dollars against $65 for the base model Raspberry Pi 4. This Raspberry Pi has more RAM, it's four gigabytes against half a gigabyte on the UniHiker and a better CPU. They're both quad cores, but the Raspberry Pi CPU is, has got higher specifications. However, the Raspberry Pi does not have a touch screen. It doesn't have a screen at all. It does not have a power supply and it doesn't have a built-in flash memory. Also, the UniHiker does run cooler and doesn't need a heatsink. The UniHiker is a better match for my personal project profile. I use mostly low CPU demand services, which leaves the CPU idle most of the time. I dislike dealing with operating systems and communication interfaces set up 
as I always rush to get some work done with my new Raspberry Pi. Try, for example, some new code or try a new component. And I always have trouble with device IP addresses and power supplies. I keep losing my SD cards. So the Unihiker seems to be the cure for all of this. My more general thoughts about the Unihiker as it comes out of the box is that it can be the basis for any project or final product that requires an embedded computer with a touchscreen, a wireless connectivity, and a mobility sensor array, where you add the software, the box, and a battery. The Unihiker is an excellent platform for various applications, from education and experimentation to full-on product prototyping and development. So that's it with my evaluation of the Unihiker. Have you used or are planning to use or to get a Unihiker? What do you think about it? What projects might you try on it if you had one right now? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please hit that like button under the video player. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you are not already a subscriber, please become one now. You get notified as soon as I upload a new video. I also invite you to head over to the Unihiker review blog post on my website to find even more details about this awesome device. You'll find the URL in the description box below the video. See you in the next one.